let me surprise you. A confusion of theories abound about what our sun is and how it operates. Primarily, the confusion is divided into two groups of theories based on completely opposite concepts. One concept is centered on the Big Bang creation ideology. It speaks of a gigantic explosion 13.8 billion years ago, in which all the matter and energy of the entire universe was created in a single place in the first three minutes of the explosion. The explosion is deemed to have furnished all the dust of the cosmos that was driven apart by the shock wave into all directions where it condensed by gravity into planets, stars, and galaxies. The opposite concept is the electric cosmology that speaks of a boundless universe that is pervaded by endless streams of plasma that interconnects all the galaxies and powers all the stars within them, including our sun. In the electric cosmology, Plasma, which carries electric potentials, is deemed to be the lifeblood of the universe. The resulting two opposite concepts have each forged opposing trends of theories that affect how we respond to the dynamics of our sun and its operating principles. They also affect how we develop our future. It is here in this context of our theories affecting the future, where things begin to get serious. The effects of cosmological theories have an enormous impact on the future of humanity by the way we respond to the effects. The effect that we face in the near future promises to be so immense that it takes the duality of scientific perceptions out of the realm of merely academic significance and gives it an existential significance. For example, the long-term exploration of the principles of plasma dynamics applied to cosmic dynamics and solar dynamics has yielded the astonishing recognition, with a high degree of certainty, that the long-suspected resumption of the Ice Age, that is deemed to be still thousands of years in the future, is much nearer and will likely start in the 2050s with the sun going inactive and unfold extremely rapidly under a 70% dimmer and cooler sun. With the potential transformation of our world on this gigantic scale looming on the near horizon, the determination of what is truth is no longer a mere academic concern, but is a concern that will determine the future existence of humanity. The transformation of our world of a magnitude that arises from a 70% dimmer sun will render most countries above the 40 degree latitude unsuitable for agriculture, if not completely uninhabitable. This means that much of the world's present agriculture will have to be relocated into indoor facilities or be placed afloat across the tropics as little suitable land exists in the equatorial regions. It is self-evident that the type of gigantic infrastructure development that will be required, complete with floating cities to service the floating agriculture, won't be contemplated, much less be built, unless the science division is healed. Obviously, of the two prevailing opposite science concepts, only one can be real. But why do we have two opposite concepts? Isn't science a quest for understanding what is real? This is true, 
but only to the point where politics entered the scene. Throughout the pages of history, science has been guided with the piola and other means to serve the doctrines of the various empires which have the power to have their objectives met. On this train, truth falls by the wayside. It always has. This applies to cosmology too. While the train of politically guided science goes far back into history and has many tales attached, the counter-science in cosmology appears to have been invented to counter the breakthrough discoveries in plasma physics by the Swedish 1920 Nobel Prize winner in physics, Hannes Alphen. The timing suggests that the Big Bang creation theory was developed and was massively promoted as a counter theory against the plasma universe. The plasma universe offers an unlimited electric energy future to humanity. The recognition of it would scrap the value of the private ownership of the world's energy resources that is one of the pillars of empire. The Big Bang cosmology protects that pillar. Under the Big Bang doctrine, plasma is deemed not to exist. Of course it does exist. A vast body of physical evidence testifies that it does exist. Inversely, no real exclusive evidence exists for all the exotic Big Bang concepts that are hugely played up and promoted as real, such as the black holes, dark matter, and stellar explosions. Deep in the Big Bang cosmology, where only gravity is allowed to be considered as a causative force, we find also the theory promoted that our sun is a gas sphere powered by nuclear reactions occurring in its core, which are deemed to fuse hydrogen atoms into helium atoms. The theory of the internally powered sun renders our sun a universal constant for all climate considerations, which literally closes the door to rational ice age concepts. The trap that has been created with this prevents humanity from preparing its world for the next ice age to come that may begin in 30 years. On this train of the Big Bang Theory, the depopulation objective is well served which is a core policy within the oligarchic system of empire. The stated objective of the masters is to reduce the population of humanity to less than one billion people, as required for the stability of a feudal system. This is what stands behind the science duality. But how do we get out of this trap? Where do we go from here? The answer must be that we dare to explore what is real.
Ironically, it is the Earth itself that weighs heavily against the Big Bang Theory. The Earth stands as a silent testimony that its atoms were created brand new when the Earth itself was formed. This scientifically proven fact, backed with hard evidence from a wide range of sources, turns the Big Bang Theory and everything that is built on it into a very imaginary fairy tale. Since the fairy tale has spawned numerous theories and inspired many opinions, it becomes necessary, therefore, in exploring the truth to separate what is demonstrably real from the landscape of educated opinions and cultivated illusions, and that one does this in a comprehensive manner. The reason is that ultimately the subject of truth is a single package. In the course of the exploration, the video introduces a number of revolutionary concepts that may seem surprising, but which are critical for the rational understanding of the dynamics of the solar system outside of the science fairy tale of the Big Bang cosmology. This means that the resulting presentation of the nature of our Sun as an energy source won't be of a type that is taught in schools, institutions, and is presented in science documentaries for the television audiences. Since the field of exploration that is presented here has become largely unknown, but covers a number of related concepts, the video exploration is being presented as a series of seven parts. The evidence with which the Earth refutes the Big Bang cosmology is presented in part two, which thereby becomes a part of the evidence for the plasma sun that has electric nuclear fusion occurring on its surface where its energy radiation originates. But before we can get to this, part one of the series is needed to establish what the sun really is. The internal nuclear fusion theory of the sun, which is the generally accepted theory, has many flaws built into it, while new evidence actually exists that exclusively supports the theory. None whatsoever. That's shocking, isn't it? All historic and visible evidence supports instead the recognition of the Sun as a plasma star that is externally powered with cold fusion nuclear synthesis occurring at its surface. This affects our climate, economies, politics, and how we relate to one another as human beings. When the truth becomes known, the world is changing. The old theories no longer apply then. Caution. This video may be disturbing to those who cherish the illusion of the sun being an invariable, internally powered nuclear fusion star. Part 3 presents evidence in the form of historic events of large plasma structures in the sky that were evidently visible in the past, but are no longer visible in our electrically weak times. Inversely, it also presents evidence of truly gigantic plasma structures that were never visible until recent times, when modern instrumentation made them visible to us. All of these prove that we live in the face of an electrically powered sun. Part 4 deals with the connection between the solar wind and the ice ages in the electric universe. Part 5 deals with the largest historic electric events in the solar system, their impact on life on Earth and the imperative for us to save the future. 
Part 6 deals with the evidence for the near impending end of the current interglacial period and the start of the next ice age in 30 years time and the certainty of the transition. Part 7 deals with the biggest question that the entire series is leading up to. The question is whether we will respond to the scientific imperatives imposed on us by the future to protect our existence. We have the materials, technologies and energy resources on hand to build the worldwide infrastructures with which to secure the human landscape in the harsh times ahead when the Ice Age starts anew and large parts of the world become uninhabitable. But will we use the resources we have? Will we build the 6,000 new cities that we need to enable the relocation of most of the great nations on Earth? Will we do this and live? Will we build the 20,000 kilometers of intercontinental bridges along the equator? and the millions of acres of floating agriculture that the bridges would connect to. Will we do all of this and create a new world for us, for a richer living under harsher conditions? Or will we do nothing and allow ourselves to be blown away with the winds of the cycles of the universe? Part 7 deals with the difficulty in answering these questions. In this context, the entire scene becomes no longer merely a physical challenge, or a technological question, or even a science issue, but becomes a spiritual challenge. The largest part of this spiritual challenge will ultimately be whether we rouse ourselves to regard one another as human beings, with enough love for one another as the brightest diamond in the landscape of life, so that the currently faint spark of love for one another becomes a fire of universal love. Then, when we get to this point, the past will be free for the brightest future imaginable. And for this imperative too, we have the resources already at hand in the wonders of our humanity.